ati Allah, ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. I'm always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis al da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad. <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah on this holy night it's always a reminder that shaitan has no interest in us achieving a success. And if we don't learn the system then we become a part of shaitan's plan. What it is to fight against oneself and to fight against big bad character is important to identify because this is a science that's very easy to understand if people write it and live by it. That for holy nights the heart is like a satellite and if we've seen the satellite dishes they have to open up like a flower. And when it opens these tajallis, manifestations that Allah want to send on holy nights and energies when nights when the energies are increased, then what is shaitan's role? Is to block the satellite from opening. So by anger and testing make the servant to enter into a state of anger regardless of what the cause because that's where people fall. They, th they think they have a just cause in their anger and their bad character. Regardless of the cause the heart must remain open. As a result of being open it receives the tajallis that Allah wants for it to receive and that is our game in life. If you get tackled then you did not score and if you get tackled enough then shaitan's playing with you like a cat plays with a mouse before he's about to eat it. So rijal means they are the men of God in which they don't play with shaitan and they know how to fight shaitan. Means that they understood the system that there's a heavenly tajalli coming and shaitan's trying to bring about an anger and as a result they do their practices, they make their wudu, they make their salawats and they keep themselves shielded from this tajalli so that they can receive what Allah want for them to receive. And people can't identify and try with their nafs to say they have a justification for their anger, it's a justified anger. So in our spiritual physiology to understand is that if the anger is based on your soul or your nafs? If it's based on your nafs it's that you feel upset, you feel degraded, you feel harmed, not physically, we're not talking physical things, that's straight out abusive. But you feel in a way that you've been brought down. Whatever you can imagine of a egoistic understanding and that it's your right to set yourself and set the situation straight. And therefore you justify your character and anger, even on these days people will start emailing about their shipment is late, this is wrong, this is this, this is that. Not realizing these are the tajallis of these nights that are coming in and these are all from your nafs. Say, no shaykh it's from my soul, say no it's from your nafs. Because whatever you're doing you're going to cut your connection with the shaykhs. So once you become angered you're not going to set a shaykh straight, you're not going to set the tariqah straight, you're going to cut your own rope. So the shaykh is a mountain, awtadan jibalan awtadan Allah describes in Qur'an that the mountains they are like pegs, awtad, there's a category of awliyaullah who are the awtad, they are the pegs. They stabilize this existence, it means they don't shake with shaitan's playing. As a result of their stability your life is like you're climbing on their reality because you're coming up through their teachings and through their practices. So when you cut and listen to shaitan and he angers you and whatever the situation is and whatever event has taken place you feel like you 
cut the mountain down because it's, like it's not of the right mind to think like that. You hire a mountain on a rope, you, I'm gonna cut the mountain. No, you cut your string and you're falling from the mountain. The mountain is still there. Go back and look, see, the mountain is still there. You, you fell off of it. So we're not going to change the mountain. You're not going to change what Allah has sent as a test. So you identify, this is all my nafs, wanting some justification, some sort of uh, vengeance, some sort of right, some sort of ability. And all of it is from the nafs. And if you go to the soul, say, what does the soul want? The soul is a servant of Allah pure and clean. The soul has no interest in your nafs and he knows that you partnered with shaitan. The soul wants you to be dead, wants you to be out of the way and wants to return back to Allah There's no interest in being on this earth. So nothing from the soul is excited about you cutting yourself with anger. The soul is actually very angry because you fed the wrong being. You fed that devil again and he's going to inflict harm against me. This is the soul's talk. That every time you feed that devil, you're coming against me even more. I actually want you out of the way, dead and into the grave so I can go back to Allah so the soul only wants that which glorifies Allah The soul, the soul loves when you're brought down, when you're humiliated, when you're put into difficulty because the soul has a problem with you, doesn't like you and doesn't like your partnership with the devil and is a servant of Allah So the soul never vindicates you and says, yeah, go do that. Go get your right. You were talked too wrong. Your boss bothered you. This person bothered you. They didn't tell you what they were supposed to tell you. Who cares? Imagine in your life if that situation right at that moment went before Allah you died in that anger. And in the presence of Allah said, look what happened. Do you really think Allah cares about anything from your dunya? And says, really? Your boss said that? And that's why you arrive to me like this and now you want all of eternity for that? I mean, Allah doesn't care. He says, I don't care for this dunya for a wing of a mosquito. You think Allah cares about any of these things? Or Allah only cares for that which is eternal. He says, but you put a zulamat against your soul. Every time you got angry, it's like you gave food to your devil. And you oppress the soul and I'm actually going to now punish you for this anger you have. Because what you're harming is something from a haqq and from a reality. You're harming something from Allah's pure Divine oceans. I set you upon this path in spiritual guise to teach you to bring down your nafs, bring down your anger, bring down your bad character. And how is it going to come to you? So if this is the objective that Allah has, so you put on your paper, Allah's objective is to bring down myself and my nafs and bring up the reality of my soul. This is your binary code. If you don't get it, you will never get it. Allah doesn't care for your job that you got it, you got a raise, you didn't get a raise doesn't care about uh, people in your household yelling at you, bothering you, being dishonest to you. Allah doesn't care for any of those things except your soul. What did you do to raise and glorify your soul? Did it praise me? Did you push down the bad character and bring the light onto that reality? And that reality, did it praise me free and clear of all your bad character? <clears throat> if that's the objective, then every test that comes, stop before you get angry and you start cutting your ropes and start cutting your connections, stop. Think, because you have to have an aqal, this path is based on having a brain. You have an aqal and a thought and you stop, think, hmm. Is this 
furthering what Allah wants from me? That Allah wants me to be and my character brought down, my anger to be brought down? This test, if Allah wants that from me, how will He give me the reward if I don't pass these tests in life? He wants to give the reward, I, I sent you to earth to be tested so that I could give you these high stations in paradise. But if every test comes and you fail, then you became enslaved to dunya and you wanted your gratification in dunya. And by getting angry, getting even, getting back, whatever these characteristics are, you became more dunya person than an akhirah person. So he described, the difficulty comes to pious people. They can't choose the difficulty. When Allah sends you a test, come from any direction, but you can't choose how you react to it. You have control. You can't say, I'm not could, uh, power, I'm powerless, I don't want to be powerless. You, know, you are power. Your power is actually to practice your path in which, how am I going to react to this situation? If it's too much for me, stay quiet, go into your room, hide, wash, make your wudu, cry on your carpet, cry to Allah until Allah tells you, you're acting like a child and I'm going to test you like I've tested people before of immense calamity, immense hardship, immense difficulties. We're not there yet. If you're crying over this, what are you going to do with the future of your life? So Allah is not going to be like, oh my gosh, you poor thing. Did somebody talk bad to you? Are you okay? No. That's why Allah is saying, go meditate, go contemplate and in your heart you'll get the answer. That become stronger and stand up to that devil and have good character. Don't subside into that badness, don't give the devil its food by the anger and the bad characteristics. So it means that's the tariqah, that's, that's gonna come on all these holy nights is when you get the influx like werewolves, they're coming out on a full moon. Doesn't even have to be full moon, just has to be a tajalli moon. An urs, now we're coming to Imam Ali's birthday on Saturday which should be on Sunday for Monday, but the tajallis are coming in. If you think shaitan is like, oh let their satellite just open and catch this tajalli just one time, no. His game is fierce, he knows his game, he doesn't change it for anyone no matter how much he likes you. He's going to bring the person down, that's how he's promised to Allah and the person is going to react. Tariqa comes and teaches us how to react, how to be insan, how to be a human in Allah's eyes. Every time we get angry, we lost our humanity. We lost the beauty and the presence of Allah's Divinely Presence. And those whom are truly oppressed and they stayed quiet, their prayers are accepted by Allah Their prayers, not their yelling and screaming because that's not oppression. When you yell and scream at somebody, get angry and react at things, that's not at anywhere close to oppression. Oppression is the one whom is quiet through a test and through a difficulty. And when somebody truly oppresses somebody, they've taken their right from them, they've insulted them, they backbit them, they slandered them. Even then Allah teaches Rijalullah, stay quiet for the sake of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad keep your muhabbat and your love, they've been oppressed. So it means Allah wants to give you even more reward to prove to you that you stayed quiet and oppression came towards you, now you know 100% your du'a is accepted by me. That's a certificate on your du'a, so when that comes, Allah is saying, ask, ask because now you've got one of those get out of jail free cards. Your du'a is really going to be accepted by the Divinely Presence because you were oppressed. So even in that there's a ni'mat and when someone slanders you and backbites you, Allah says, because everything Allah does is immensely balanced, that not only will I accept your du'a from your oppression but I make them carry your sins, the one who did all these things to you, backbite you, 
So in either way you look at it, you're always winning with good character. But if you take your right and you want to yell and scream in life, you made your shaitan much stronger and you caused a zulamat and oppression against your soul. And that's when you run into trouble with the Divine, the Presence. We pray that Allah inspire us. When you write it and you go back and look at it and you put a post-it note in your room because you keep falling into temptation by it. So we put post-it room, post-its all over the room when we were starting in our path as a reminder. Don't get angry, Allah wounds for my soul, all these bullet points of this talk you put as post-it notes where you're looking. So that anytime you look at yourself you remember to catch yourself, stay calm, of course you're going to be tested. Have the best of character Allah's about to raise you. If somebody's been unjust to you, you just got a reward ticket from Allah because you stayed quiet with good character Allah's asking, ask what you want. And that's why so much and so many times pious people, some people call them saints, some people call them just pious people. Why are all their prayers so accepted because they're so oppressed by people? People come trying to harm them, backbite them, attack them, put a knife onto them, whatever it is that people are doing. With sabirin in whom are patient, Allah gives them the reward and that's their whole life and that's the, the reality of their existence of how they've been taught. And as a result of how they've been taught, they teach people that act like that too. If you want Allah's reward, if you don't want Allah's reward then do whatever you like and become a murid for shaitan and he do what he wants to do with people. And the difficulty of this dunya now opens upon people in, in horrific ways. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us on these holy nights. Keep our hearts always to be open and to receive these tajallis. And in any aspect of dealing with the tariqah, be patient. Don't lose your temper, don't think it's something in the postage in the mail or it's this or it's that. Everything is related to your test. Keep yourself to have good character inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. بسير سورة الفاتحة